Okay, so welcome uh, Natalie and Emily. Thank you for joining us. So what we're here to talk about today is about our new continuity of carer service and to hear your story about how that went and how beneficial it was to you. So I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to let you tell your story in your own words. So whenever you're ready. Okay. So you want me to start? Yeah, you can start. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so I moved into the continuity of care model of care whilst um, Natalie was all under, already under my care when I was working for my GP surgery. Um, but for the continuity of care model, we're moving away from that and doing more home visits um, to try and make it a more personalised care. So um, because Natalie fit into our um, low risk criteria for that team, uh, I offered yeah. for her to come with me if she wanted to into that model so that she wouldn't have to swap midwives and could stay with me. Because she'd, at that, to that point, she'd only ever seen me through the pregnancy. Yeah. So we thought that would be nice to con continue. So uh, Natalie yeah. de decided to to join the continuity team at that yeah, point. Yeah, she told uh, me about it, and then I was like, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I don't, don't see any reason, you know, why you'd want to keep changing midwife. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So what, 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 what was good about it for you? So, obviously, you were together throughout the whole journey. So what do you think was, was good about that? Just the sheer you? fact that you wasn't being swapped around constantly. Um, she knew exactly what my pregnancy was like, me as an individual, my health status, everything. Um, obviously knowing her as well, um, gotten to know her over nine months, you know, and the birth and after that. It's, it, yeah, it's been spectacular. <laughs> Excellent. So it's almost kind of the kind of old school model, isn't it, that yeah. your midwife is with you throughout? Um, yeah. So just to clarify, so you were actually doing the antenatal visits and then right through to labour and birth and yeah. postnatal. Yeah. yeah, so it doesn't always work out that we're working when somebody goes into labour. Um, yeah. But And I wasn't actually on call the day that Natalie went into labour, um, but I was working, so I swapped the on-call day with one of my colleagues so that I could then stay with Natalie for a Yeah, for I the was day. very fortunate. <laughs> um, yeah, hugely fortunate to have had her the whole way. Um, so yeah, it really was lovely to yeah. be at the birth of someone that you've looked after the whole way through the yeah. pregnancy. And um, I felt, you know, I kept looking to her pro more than, more so than the other midwives that were there watching, because obviously I knew that she was very in tune with what was happening, how it was progressing my labour, and just everything. Excellent. So, yeah. so how did it go on the d on the big day then? Um, <laughs> well, I you basically... You have to go into graphic detail. <laughs> yeah, I was with my partner, um, and I was getting quite severe back pain, and I thought it was just aching, and, then, and I was getting quite frustrated and annoyed with him, and um, asking him to give me massages, because I kept thinking, God, I'm getting real, you know, really need to help me out with this. Um, and then I got the classic band as well, around um, the classic signs of labour, and... And that started about 4 a.m. in the morning. And then I was, yeah, getting quite <laughs> frustrated with that. Um, and then I decided um, to get up because I wasn't settling. Um, and I, I bled. Um, at that point, I rang the... Um, it's a pregnancy assessment yeah, unit. Press, yeah, I was trying to think. Yeah, and um, yeah, they told me to come into the Derby Royal. Um, which I was a little bit disappointed by because I wanted a home birth. I'd wanted it the whole way. And I kept thinking, oh, is this it? Is if they're going to try and make me stay in or anything? Um, so, yeah, stayed in for a few tests. I was monitored, um, watching my contractions. Um, and then as soon as I was able to go, um, left, basically, um, with my mum and partner and, and went home, having um, quite regular contractions by that point. Um, and yeah, and I think as we got home, we rang you, like that Dan did, my partner, immediately. Um, and the funny thing is, is that was the very first day of the continuity care that it actually started. So he was technically the first baby on it, which is yeah. just quite funny. <laughs> so the series started from eight o'clock that morning. So um, yeah, so I think you tried to get in contact, hadn't you, overnight? Yeah, <coughs> the day before. Um, with with yeah. our team, but we'd not. 
the phone didn't kind of go into service until eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so that's why she ended up having to go into the pregnancy assessment as well. Yeah, we I couldn't get available. in contact with her basically. And the day before, <laughs> my mum actually said to me, you need to get her number because you could go into labour. And I was like, no, because I was 39 weeks. And I'm like, no, I've got, you know, a week or two, yeah. Um, and she was like, you need to, you know, you need to try and track her down to get a number. Um, anyway, I rang them up and they went, it starts tomorrow. So even if you went to labour today, she couldn't come. So luckily, Twinkle Toes came <laughs> the next day when it started. Um, and yeah, and I was able to have her, so I was dead pleased about it. And it was like a massive thing with the midwives because it was the first baby of the continuity care that started. Yeah, and it was a home birth. Yeah. Um, and with it being, um, it's her first baby at home as well. Um, she did amazingly well. Um, and I think part of that was down to actually the trust between each other we'd got. So, um, yeah, I told her from the word go, I want a home birth. <laughs> I was very self-assured with that. Um, so, yeah. I think it's not having wonderful. the restrictions of the clinic times as well and going and seeing at home allowed us to talk a lot through, more through any questions and yeah. concerns that she may have about It was a lot more open. Labor. It was a lot more chilled um, out. It wasn't so clinical. It was... And I think we managed to prepare for labour better, didn't we? I think. Yeah, I, I pick her brains constantly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she'd probably get sick of me. <laughs> That's wonderful. So, um, so overall, what's your reflection about how helpful it's been having the same midwife throughout? It's been what I basically wasn't expecting. I was expecting to have loads of midwives. And I actually said to my mum, whilst I was in early pregnancy, I said, oh, I'm just going to get loads of midwives and it's just going to do my head in, basically. Um, so, yeah, it's been the opposite of what I've expected. And obviously, because of it, wonderful. So, yeah, I'd I definitely think it should be offered to far more women. And I've been very fortunate to have had it the whole way through, have the same midwife. Excellent. That's wonderful. And you mentioned as well that one of the things is you had that trust with your midwife that you might not have been able to, because it's about building that rapport, isn't it? And, and learning yeah. about each other and getting that relationship. So do you, yeah. do you think that's the key thing about it? Yeah, it's... Looking at it more personally, so, you know, talking about your diet, talking about breastfeeding, talking about your options at birth. Um, I had a, um, what's it, the umbilical cord laid? What do you call that? Yeah, so uh, optimal the name. clamping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'd late clamping basically so that the oxygen could um, get to him more. Um, things like that, options. Um, so yeah, and talking about, I spoke about research, whether current research, um, things I'd like to do, and birthing techniques, which I did. I utilized breathing massively. That was the thing that, <laughs> most powerful thing that got me through it. Um, so yeah, various aspects. It's not just what you typically think. Mm -hmm. So you'd recommend it to, to anyone else then? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Anything else you want to share with us? About your experience? Right, from, from my point of view, it just yeah. makes it you end up being a little bit sad when you have to like, finish the care with somebody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you do actually been... really build up a relationship with people. Yeah. Uh, so it's quite sad yeah, when, I remember when it comes when to I... an end, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I remember <laughs> when I first went in the clinic and sitting down with her and I'm, I'm pregnant and I didn't sort of expect this. And Yeah, for me, I watched the transition from her being kind of yeah. a little bit scared at the beginning of the a pregnancy bit, yeah. through to growing into being a fantastic mother and developing all yeah. those maternal Yeah, and then instincts. it was like, come on, let's do this. Let's have this home birth. And yeah, and it was exactly what I wanted. Excellent. So, yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, any other final thoughts before we finish up? Don't be scared of home births. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, excellent. There can be everything you want and more if you believe in yourself. That's brilliant. Perfect <laughs> to end on. Thank you so much, both of you. Thank you for joining us. And we will share this story. I think it's great to promote this approach. Um, this has been part of a trial initially, hasn't it? Um, and you're a perfect success story, especially being the first ever yeah, um, no. birth as yeah. part of that. That's absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Awesome.